My name is Warren Tolner. I'll spell it. T is in Thomas, O-E-L-L-N-E-R. First name is Warren. I was born in Guttenberg, New Jersey on January the 28th, 1922. I lived in New Jersey for approximately five years where I moved to Franklin Square on Long Island. And having and living there for about two or three years, we moved to Elmont, which is towards New York. It was about um, 20 minutes ride by car. From there, we had some tough times. Wall Street uh, collapsed, and everybody had nothing. It was, it was just a miserable time of year, and um, cold. Everybody had nothing. I joined the CCC, and if you don't know what the CC stands for, CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps. I enlisted, I was 17, I quit school, and uh, I was going to Jamaica High School. And we spent, my brother Charles, who's deceased, and my brother-in-law, us three, we went to Fort, we passed the, the health, and we went to Winnemarca, Nevada, which is about 200 miles east of uh, Reno, Nevada. We were there for six months. And, we, and I'll tell you, we were getting $28 a month. We would get eight. The rest of the money would be sent home because you had to be um, in a wanting financially. That's how we got into it. So I did six months there, come home, got myself a job in Dugan's Bakery. That was a big uh, bakery that had uh, originally started with horse, horse and buggy, and then it motorized, and I, I did about a year there. But I was yearning to join the United States Navy. On February the 17, 1941, I passed, I, I took the test and everything, brought the papers home to my parents, and they said to me, Warren, do you know what you're signing up for? Six years. Now, six years is a long time. Mom and Dad, you know, I want to go in the Navy. Okay, they signed for it, and so therefore, I joined the Navy on February 18, 1941. I then went up to Newport, Rhode Island for a period of two months of training. And then we were hearing all about a great ship in North Carolina being built in the home base of Brooklyn Navy Yard. Well, sure enough, to my delight, after graduating from the training school, um, I was assigned to the North Carolina. The, the future of that ship was going to be called the Showboat. It's a brand new battleship. It was, it was uh, the keel was laid in October of 1938. And it took four years to build. And sure enough, um, we took the train down from Newport to New York and was going through the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I could see this ship, and it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen because it was only in, put in commission a week before. That's when they have become. There were 50,000 people at that ceremony, and... Uh, the ship was not fit for duty. There was hawsers and lines all over the ship. But anyway, one aboard saluted the flag off and asked for permission to come aboard. That's, that is routine. Anytime you go aboard the ship, either leaving or coming aboard, you, see, you salute the flag. This is tradition of the Navy, the United States Navy, that is. All right, guys. So anyway, 
the, the ship was being prepared. Uh, it, was, it was done in big secrecy. Uh, we would have, uh, the, uh, us rookies would be taking visitors aboard and going through the different uh, offices, checking different things. We were sworn to for secrecy because the Japanese, we, 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 uh, we our division officers told us, uh, keep your mouth shut, don't tell anything about your ship because a swift of the tongue could sink a ship. That was the battle cry of those, of those days. Anyway, so we went on shakedown cruises. I go to the, to the theater and I would see this North Carolina on a screen going through uh, its uh, training days. The, the main event of, of that cruise on the, was to, to test the, how many guns we could fire. So anyway, we fired a main battery. Our main battery consisted of nine 16 inch guns, six up forward and turret one, and turret two up forward, and turret three, which my part of the ship, which, is, which was the stern. So the big thing was to fire all the guns at one time. So at around six o'clock one, one evening, we went to general quarters and we were going to fire all our main batteries to see how the ship would, uh, could stand the, uh, the blast. Anyway, we counted from one down to ten. When it hit ten, we fired all the, all the nine-inch guns to the starboard side as well as the five-inch on the port side. Well, the ship when when we fired we had a we had the ship move about a foot and some of the some of the some of our pipes or stanchions as we call it buckled but basically it was it was a good trial run for that so therefore we qualified for that we go back to port and doing different things we went to Kingston, Jamaica, for our first liberty, and uh, it was it was quite an excitement to be on a ship for the first time at sea because I had never dreamt about that. I used to think of Jimmy Cagney and Fred McHugh in the old days of the Navy, just prior to the war. Anyway, it was a thrill uh, to be aboard. It was my dream, really. My, we were such a beautiful looking ship going in and out of New York Harbor. We can't tell you how many times we went back and forth, in and out. Anyway, we got the nick. It was so beautiful, they nicknamed it the USS North Carolina, the showboat. Well, for, it was a well done job. It was just plain beautiful. We had enlisted men of about 2,300 men. We also had about 150 officers. Our first commanding officer was Olaf Husford, a real, a real Norwegian name for sure. And anyway, we had him on for, for six months and became an admiral. But then uh, we also had another captain after that, a captain called Oscar Badger.